All right, thank you everyone for joining. We are so excited to have you here with us today for our webinar on ensuring your unit is tax time ready. Now at this point, you should be able to hear me clearly and you should be able to see our screen. If at any time in the webinar you have any technical difficulties, you are welcome to let us know using the questions box on your control panel. And you'll also be able to utilize that at the very end of the webinar during the Q&A. But for now, I'd like you to use it to just let me know if you've used UnitWise before. If anybody is currently using it or use, has used it in the past, just use that control panel and let us know. And for anyone who is a little bit less familiar, I'll go ahead and give you a brief background. Um, so I'm Christina. I'm one of the heroes with UnitWise. And UnitWise was actually launched in 2009 and created by a director to help other directors succeed in business management. Through customer feedback and in-house technology, we've actually been able to help thousands of directors and consultants grow their businesses. Now, I'm really excited to begin this webinar today by introducing our VIP host, Joel Trimberger. Joel is the husband of Mary Kay director, Kimberly Trimberger. And Joel, we are so excited to have you with us today. Well, thanks, Christina and Unilize for having me here. I'm really excited to do a webinar with you on tax time. Um, my wife, Kimberly, has been a Mary Kay consultant for nine years, and she has been a director for eight years, and she is a car driver as well. So we're uh, trying to grow her business as fast as possible so that uh, she can one day be a national sales director. Um, I've been helping her with her business uh, from day one, actually. I help her with her expenses, and we have uh, board meetings every day almost every weekend to just go about uh, trying to, you know, get the direction of her business correctly. And I try to help her out the best I can by being her back office work. So um, I do her paperwork and do all the, the really boring stuff so that she can go out and grow the team and work with her team members. Well, that is awesome, Joel. And I'm sure that having that experience, you're going to have a lot to share with everyone watching today. Um, so today we are going to cover preparing for tax time with year-end inventory, expenses, profit and loss, and mileage. And we'll also have some exclusive bonus content for you at the end of the webinar, so stick around. Okay, first of all, uh, to talk about year-end inventory, uh, definitely when you're doing your taxes, you need to have the value of your uh, beginning of your inventory. Uh, and that's going to be the same number as your year-end inventory from 2016. So that's going to be your beginning inventory for 2017. If you just start out with the business, you're going to have a $0 inventory value since you didn't have any inventory on January 1st. So that kind of makes sense. Um, so if you missed counting your inventory on December 31st of last year or January 1st of this year to get your year-end or your beginning of your inventory, you can still um, do that. You can count it now if you use unit-wise or any other method, or you can just count it and add up the cost value. You can uh, add up whatever inventory you have in stock, add any purchases from Mary Kay that you've ordered in since January 1st, and then subtract out any sales that you've had since January 1st. This will get you your inventory value back to January 1st. If you've been tracking inventory throughout the year using UnitWise, you can use the snapshot of quantity on hand report to go back to the January 1 value. This is a great feature, especially for those starting out with inventory and having to do taxes with Mary Kay, with the Mary Kay business for the first time. And uh, it keeps a snapshot of your year-end inventory uh, for any day that you pick. So that's awesome. The second thing we're going to talk about is sales. Uh, when entering sales into UnitWise, the inventory is taken out with the sale and the value is updated immediately. So you can go check your quantity on hand, inventory value, and sales history reports. And again, you can do this at any time. It's live and up to date whenever you want to do it. Also have to deal with purchase orders when you're purchasing your inventory from Mary Kay. UnitWise is able to tell you what you need to order by using the minimum order quantity and quantity on hand feature in the inventory section. 
Using this feature will help you in keeping the right amount of inventory on hand for your customers. UnitWise also can create the purchase order you entered into Mary Kay in Touch automatically without manually entering the same data again. And that's such a great time saver that UnitWise has developed to uh, save precious minutes of team building for you. Also show, uh, UnitWise also shows a profit and loss statement. Uh, any business needs a profit and loss statement, every from retail to industrial to you know, whatever business is out there, and UnitWise has that covered as well. It's going to keep track of your sales for whatever time period you want to report, whether it's a week, a month, six months, a year. Keeps track of your shipping that you collected in from your customers and your shipping that you paid to Mary Kay. Keeps track of your sales taxes paid, your inventory purchases, or it's also called cost of goods, and also your expenses. So as Joel mentioned, to see what you have on hand, you can go to your snapshot of quantity on hand report. We'll go to home report. From there, we'll choose the year end tax category and go to snapshot of quantity on hand. You'll be able to select the as of date that you wish to see your inventory value. So for example, December 31st. Run your report. And be able to see your inventory on hand as well as the total amount for all of your inventory as long as you've ensured that the correct count is in unit wise. This is also an excellent guide to use printed out when you're actually performing a physical inventory count. And to print it, you would simply need to click the export button and choose to export the report as an Excel, PDF, or Word file. Once it's exported, you'll be able to print it. Okay, the next section to talk about is expenses. Now, unit-wise, you can enter expenses two different ways. You can enter them in bulk expenses or individual expenses. Unit-wise supports entering expenses one receipt at a time, or you can do bulk expenses. Uh, I use bulk expenses the most because you can actually enter them one receipt at a time, just on one simple line and you can enter as many receipts as you need to and then just save, save them all at one time at the end instead of saving them individually one at a time. It's up to you preference-wise, but the bulk expenses actually goes quite a bit quicker and it's a little bit easier. You'd also have to set up your payees for your expenses. And you can have as many payees as you want. Payees can be entered quickly in the individual expense entry or into the payee list under accounts. So if you forget to add a payee before you start entering expenses, you can quick add using the individual expense option. And all your expenses will be on the profit and loss statement in the total value. So I think we all know expenses can be a little bit overwhelming, but by entering them in unit-wise under accounts and expenses, it does become quite a bit easier. So as Joel mentioned, you can either use the individual add expense to add multiple details about your expense, everything from your payment type and amount to whether it's a recurring expense and even add an attachment if you wish. Or as he mentioned, he tends to use the bulk add expenses feature where you've got your one item, you can add your expense and continue to add as many rows as you need to to enter all of your expenses quickly. If you have forgotten to add one of your payees, or maybe it's a new payee, just click on Add Payee to add all of their details, save them, and continue adding your expenses. Once you're done, you can just choose Save Expenses. Okay, the next thing to talk about is the profit and loss. Um, to do that, get an accurate profit and loss statement, you want to make sure that all of your receipts, all of your sales receipts are entered for all your customer sales, which also would keep track of your cash coming in, keeps track of your inventory going out, and then helps you track for your inventory purchases so you can you know, purchase correctly from Mary Kay to uh, replenish your inventory. You want to keep track of shipping from Mary Kay and to the customer. 
And you also want to keep track of your credit card charges. And what's a great feature about UnitWise, they're integrated with ProPay. So if you want to just run a credit card through UnitWise, it's done automatically. And all your expense for the credit card transaction, the sale, the cost, and the shipping are all done at one time. So you don't have anything more to do to go into like ProPay separately and enter a separate transaction. You definitely want to keep track of your expenses. One important thing would be meals and travel meals. So there is a difference. Meals is anything that you do within a 30 mile radius of your home and travel meals is anything outside a 30 mile radius. So you can actually get a bigger deduction on travel meals because you're away from home. So keep that in mind. Keep track of all your office supplies, all your advertising, any professional fees that you may have, whether you're going to seminar, your weekly success meeting, career conference, and the like. Keep track of your, your phone usage and your phone, your phone internet payment, any postage you do for shipping, either shipping uh, postcards out or you know shipping product to customers, any printing that you do, and you can also keep track of your commissions and unit wise as well. So that will also be reflected in your profit and loss statement. So all your, all your expenses will be on your profit and loss statement so you can track month to month and can run reports for any time period needed. If a pay does not have any expense assigned to it for the year, it will not show on the statement. I use this tool almost exclusively for the expense tracking and income tracking to check the health of the business rather than waiting until the end of the year. The statement can be run at any time for any time frame you want, yearly, quarterly, or monthly, and this will show you if you are making money. All right. Now, once you have all of those details entered in UnitWise, you can view them by, again, going to Home, Report, and this time going to the Account category. Here we have our Profit and Loss Statement, where, again, we'll be able to pick Customized Date and run the report to see our sale of goods details, cost of goods, other income, and expense details. And at the bottom of the report, you can view your total income as well as your total expense. Or if you'd prefer to have a more detailed list, you can go to Profit and Loss Details, select your time period, and this will provide you with a detailed list of transactions that make up the Profit and Loss Financial Statement. All right, another great thing about UnitWise, it has a module for keeping track of your mileage. And mileage is a great tax reducer when it comes to tax time. You want to keep track of all your mileage, business and personal. There's two ways to keep track of your car expense, car expenses, either the straight mileage method or the expense method. And it's really up to you on, on what you want to do. I actually do both and then we kind of see what works out for better for us at the end of the year. So the straight mileage method, you just keep track of all the miles that you have and you'll actually uh, figure out how many were personal and then how many were for work. And then if you do the expense method, you can actually write off all of your gas, all of your car maintenance, all your car washes, anything like that. So you want to keep all your maintenance expenses as well. So it's kind of up to you. You know, you can kind of play with the numbers. Usually if you're using TurboTax or some other kind of tax software, it will actually ask you in there what kind of mileage deduction you want to take or your CPA will actually figure that out for you as well. Now to record this mileage information in UnitWise, we'll again go to Accounts, but this time we're going to choose Trip Log. So here, you'll be able to add your vehicles, places that you frequent, and your trip. Simply enter the details of it, such as subject, date, choose whether you'd like to record the odometer readings or the actual miles, enter the vehicle, your starting point, ending point, and phase. And then at the end of the year, when you're ready to see those totals, we'll go to Home, Report, Year End Tax, and the Trip Log Report. This report will give you a full list of your trips along with the total miles traveled below. And we've reached our bonus content section of the webinar. So we are going to be sharing tips on newsletters 
creating your image, uploading them to your library, and sending them out with email marketing. Okay, so I actually do the newsletters for my wife's business as well. We do them once a month, right about the middle of the month after all the Mary Kay in touch reports have updated and all the orders are in. Um, to get started, uh, we actually use Microsoft Publisher to get our JPEG images. We just um, create the flyer with some team stats on the first page and birthdays and anniversaries and things like that. And then the second and third page is usually some resources for prizes for the for the month or the quarter and and you know talk about the. Uh, the bracelets that Mary Kay offers for the $600 orders and things like that. So we just use Publisher to get started and to make the JPEG images and then uh, we upload them into UnitWise to the resource library. So once you've actually created that image, we'll go back over into our account. We're going to go to resource library and then image library. Now it's important when you're uploading um, an image that you haven't uploaded the type of before. For example, if you've never uploaded a newsletter before, you're going to need to create a newsletter category to put it in so that you can quickly find it in the future. So we'll go from here to image categories and to add category. And we're quickly going to add our newsletter category. You can change the display order or add a description if you wish. And now you can see we have our newsletter category listed. So we'll go back to image library and upload image. So here we will need to name our image to begin with. So we'll name it April Newsletter. Pick our category that we've just created and choose our file. So this will be from our computer. We'll pull up our newsletter and you can add a description if you wish or you can just save it. Now you can see we have our newsletter category and our newsletter inside of it. So our next step is going to be to actually share that newsletter through email marketing. Once I start the email marketing, uh, you're just going to uh, name your campaign. So Christina will name it newsletter. But that's all that's just for us to see and then the subject line would be April newsletter 2018 and then the email from Dame is going to be your name that's from the profile that you set up in UnitWise and then you can pick the send, send dated time so you can actually tell the system when you'd like to send it so if I don't want to send it on the 3rd of April I want to send it on the 15th of April I can just set it up then and the time to go and it'll automatically send it send it for you Great, it's a great feature to have. And once you've picked all of those details, you'll be able to pick which group you want this to go out to. So since it's our newsletter, we'll go ahead and select our team members. Um, and we are going to use a right now template. So you can see we have our blank email template. And the first thing I'll do is add our image by clicking the image icon in the toolbar. Now we'll browse our server. And again, this is where that category comes into play because we need to be able to locate our image by going to it, click on your image, and you will be able to adjust the size of it on the left. So we'll start out with maybe 500. And as you can see, the height automatically adjusts as long as you have your ratio locked with the little lock here. And click OK, and now our image is in our template. Now, if you would like, you can add more images, or you could even add a border to go around your image by choosing the custom borders icon in the toolbar, picking a border you'd like to add to your email template. I don't always use the glittery ones, Christina. I didn't say you did, but maybe some of these people <laughs> like the glittery ones. I'm sure ones. they would. Uh, I like the glittery ones. <laughs> so once you've got your border picked out, you'll just put your cursor in the center of it. You can add text as well. It doesn't have to be an image, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how an image would look. So again, we're going to choose our image icon, browser server, and we'll say maybe we're going to add a product image. So again, I'm going to mess with the size of it. We don't want it to be too big, and choose OK. Now we do have our image. 
and we just want to customize our border a little bit to fit it a little better. Now you can center these if you want. They don't have to be on the left, but you could also add more details over here. You can really customize the email to fit your needs. And as Joel mentioned earlier, when you're ready and happy with it, you can just take your time for it to go out and either choose send now or schedule at the bottom. So at this point, we have reached our Q&A. Um, first, I want to thank Joel so much for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it, Joel. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad to be here. And I know I know the ladies watching are, have got to be excited from all of your experience. So uh, if you guys want to go ahead, ask Joel or myself any questions that you may have about anything we've talked about today, and we'll go ahead and monitor that question section to get this answer for you. I see there's a question about uh, the 30 minutes or 30 miles for the for the meal deduction. Uh, it is 30 miles, so you just want to make, keep in mind it's 30 miles. And then with anything else, you, I'm not going to advocate it, but you may can fudge just a little bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding, sort of. Um, but yeah, it is 30 miles. So yeah, that's the the travel meal, and you do get an extra discount. I don't exactly remember what the extra discount is you know percentage wise of course it always depends on your amount of income amount of expenses things like that but um but it is 30 miles now if you guys would prefer to actually speak and ask us your questions you're welcome to raise your hand and we'll be happy to unmute you if you prefer um but it does look like we have another question for the moment from Ramona, and she'd like to know where she can update her inventory in UnitWise. So we'll just go back over your account, and you're actually going to go to Inventory, Products, and there's a bulk edit feature on the upper right-hand corner. So once you've chosen the bulk edit, you will have three filter options to change your table layout. So you can choose the section, the category, active versus inactive, and you can also use the search box here to type in the partial name or partial part number of your actual item. But once you've found the product that you want to change the quantity on hand of, you will just double click. Let's say maybe we have 10 of these instead of 12, so we'll change that to 10. Click anywhere else on the screen and you'll get a green update letting you know that it has been updated successfully. And it looks like we have a question about actually handling your accounts and if there's a way to balance those when unit-wise. And you actually can. That's a really great question. The way it's set up, whenever you receive purchase orders, you'll be able to choose the accounts that you've paid for those with in unit-wise. And you'll create those accounts by going to Accounts, Chart of Accounts. So you can see here we have bank accounts laid out, we have income accounts and expense accounts. So you'll have any credit card accounts that you use for expenses, anything like that listed here. And you'll be able to handle any banking that you do, any expenses that we covered earlier, any other income. And you'll be able to make these reflect your actual accounts so that you can keep up with what's happening with your business every step of the way. Now. One moment, looks like we have a couple more questions. Um, there is somebody asking if we will be sending the webinar out. Um, I'll be happy to send it to you once the recording is available. But you guys can also always check out our YouTube channel. It's just go to YouTube, search UnitWise, and all of our previous webinars are listed there. So you can subscribe and make sure that you always get the newest webinar. Um, it looks like there's a, another question about the account. So when you have a customer invoice and the customer actually makes the payment on the invoice, you'll pick the account that you want that money to go into. It's important to note that it's not going to move any money within your actual accounts. While we are integrated with ProPay and you can charge your customer's card, 
by entering transfers and things like that, you're not going to move money in your actual account, but you will be able to choose which account they went into so that UnitWise will accurately reflect your actual bank account. And you do have the option of doing a split payment on invoices. You would be able to choose a couple of different payment methods. Um, so that is absolutely an option. Yeah, for, for those customers that want to pay $20 in cash and $40 on a credit card. Exactly. Yeah, and that, that, or if somebody um, comes to you and they say, you know, I have a 20 right now. Can I just pay you the rest of it? You know, when I get paid Friday, that is definitely an option. You can record that partial payment and then go back in and, and finish it whenever uh, you receive that full payment. Now, it looks like we have another question about, um, Joel had mentioned that UnitWise can show you what you need to order. So... That is correct. You would go to inventory, and again, we'll excuse me. We'll go to products, and we're again going to go to the bulk edit feature. And here you've got your reorder level, and that is what's going to factor into what you actually need to have on your order. So if you know that, you know, maybe the foundation primer sunscreen sells all the time, especially during the summer with it getting warm out. You can change your reorder level to maybe 10, and again, click away to save that number. And once you've got your reorder level set, you want to do that for all of your main products. You can go to Home and then Products to view your shopping list report. So this report will display your products, the part number, and your ideal count, which is what we just set, compared to your quantity on hand. So you know exactly what you need to order based on what you want to have. Uh, again, like the other reports, you can print this one so that you can use it pretty easily when you actually create your order. And So there are a couple of ways to do gift cards. Um, it kind of depends on your specific situation. So maybe if you have a husband who purchased a gift card for his wife and she's not going to use it for a while, you would first of all create a product for that gift card. So you go to Inventory Products. And on the right here, you would choose Add Product. And you would want to make the product name whatever the gift certificate is for. So we'll say it's $100. Excuse me. And you can choose your product category. It can be wherever you'd like it to go. You can actually create your own category if you wish. Um, but for now, we'll just pick one for the time being, and you'll need to choose your part number. Um, you can make that anything you want. You can make it the date if you wish. And this part is important, the price information. So if you had this $100 gift card, but they only paid $80 for it, you would need to change this suggested retail price to $80 so that when you put it on an invoice, it actually only charges that much. And then you would save your product and actually create an invoice of this item to the husband who purchased it, just like you create any other invoice. You type in the name or the part number and save that. Now, if he is you know, going to give it to her, but she's not going to use it for a while, you can then create a credit on her account to show that gift certificate by going to customer's credit slash refund start credit slash refund, make sure that it's on credit memo, not refund from credit, type your customer's name, so I'll just pick one of mine, and you would put the amount of the credit, so in this case it would be $100 for that $100 gift certificate, and save the credit. You would also be able to choose a memo, so you could put in the details of that credit. So if you ever forget what it was for, you can go back and look at what that was pertaining to. 
Um, so that is probably the easiest way to do it. There are a couple of other ways, but that is definitely one if they're not going to pay you for, or excuse me, if they're not going to use the gift certificate for a little while. Um, the last one is actually a question about the discount when you put in the $100 certificate. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, Okay, so you put in $100 and show a, a discount when you process the invoice. That's an option as well. If you prefer to do it that way, that's okay. Um, the only thing I generally recommend is just however you're going to do it, just be consistent so that if you ever need to go back and look, you always kind of know what you did. Um, but that is definitely an option as well. You can turn that off, right? Like you yeah. take a zero discount at the time of sale? Yes, right? yes, absolutely. Um, sorry, I'm going to go to the last one or this one hasn't been answered yet. Um, so there is a question about splitting deposits uh, part into checking and part into savings for sales tax. And you would be able to choose which account you want that deposit to go into, and you can create um, whatever accounts you wish. You can name them whatever you'd like, so that is going to be a possibility. The only thing um, I recommend for the accounts is make sure that you're very accurate when you're receiving payment on invoices, when you're receiving payment on purchase orders. Just make sure that you do make them reflect so that the correct information is displayed within your account. Um, and yes, yes, you absolutely could continue to use that category and that product for the $100 gift certificate. Um, so that, that works perfectly. Um, it looks like the questions are starting to slow down, but we do definitely appreciate all of your questions today, guys. Um, if anybody comes up with any more, you are more than welcome to reach out to us. Um, our contact information is listed here, so you can reach us at unitwise.com. You can email us at heroes at unitwise.com, or you can reach us on all of our social media platforms at unitwise. Be sure to follow us so you never miss out on any of the exciting stuff we've got going on. It looks like there may be one more question. We'll go ahead and grab that one. Um, the last question is if there's a way to update the account if they haven't uh, necessarily been accurate to this point. And to a certain extent that there is, um, you, you can do some editing. It becomes a little bit tricky because it's so integrated. But if you would like, um, I can send you an email or give you a call later and we can kind of figure out exactly how we can update this account for you. So that's definitely something we can look into. Um, and you guys are very welcome. Thank you all for joining us and for asking all these great questions. Um, I do want to mention one last thing. Make sure that if you haven't already, you join our exclusive Facebook group for members of UnitWise. We're going to have some very fun, different content going on in there. And it's going to be stuff that we don't post on our regular accounts. So make sure that if you haven't already, you join. You can either um, add UnitWise as a friend on Facebook, you can add myself, but we will be happy to join you into that account. Um, all right. Well, thank you all, and thank you one last time, Joel. We really appreciate it, but everyone have an amazing day, and thank you.